Space Learning. Erin has launched a new engineering program called Young Engineers of Today and also coaches three robotics teams. In his free time, he loves to spend time with his three kids, Aiden, Addison, and Ava, and their new bulldog, Frankie Mae, and acting like a fourth child to his wife, Amanda. Last, he is an avid coffee consumer, frequently spotted wearing bow ties searching for the perfect cup of joe. You will find all of his work on his website, www.coffeeforthebrain.com. His presentation today is called Improvement is No Longer the Challenge. Aaron, we are eager to hear from you. All right, so I'm kind of a pacer. Can you guys hear me okay? So I don't have to stand by this mic. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, well, I already introduced myself, so there's enough there. Uh, my talk today is Improvement is No Longer the Challenge. I just want to start off saying that I'm beyond humbled and honored to really speak in front of uh, this crowd and particularly these eight students. Typically when I talk, uh, when I talk to general students, it's always about how not to be average. And this obviously was not the message that needed to be delivered today. Um, this has really been one of the most, most challenging talks to give because how do you speak to people that have a resume tenfold what I have um, and they've been on the earth a lot less than I have. So what I want you to think about, and really for everybody in this room today, is how do we move beyond improvement? We talk improvement all the time, but what we need to be asking ourselves is not just how to be better, but how to be different. But understanding that different isn't enough. It's a combination of the both. And to be that leader, you can't just think about improvement, but you have to think about how to separate yourself from the rest of the crowd. And so listening to all these things today and reading the bios ahead of time, I, I was thinking this is the perfect thing for the eight of you that, that, that are being recognized today. Your job isn't to catch up to the status quo. Your job is to be the status quo and to create it. So often in our time, we're told how to do things. Do this, do that, go here, follow my instruction, follow my lead. What I'm challenging you as you're moving on to this next stage of your life is do not wait for instructions. Go make it happen. Now, that doesn't mean that you just go and boycott everything you've been told in your life, but understand that it's your path, and it's your life, and you need to go make that happen. Go separate yourself. At some point, you have to believe that you have what it takes, and I know that that's a scary idea to, to process, but holy cow, look at what you've done already by 18 years of age. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond humbled to honestly stand here um, and talk to you about that. And so imagine the world that had no middlemen, no publishers, no PR folks, no one telling you what you couldn't do. And if you lived in that world, what would you do? I want you to go do that. Because you have the skills, and you have the abilities, and you have the mindset, and you have everything needed to go make that happen. And so look at those white spaces of now. I know we spent so much time on what's going to happen this summer, or where am I going to be in five years, or what's going to happen in the next hour and a half. And, but we've got to think about our now. What are our, our decisions, our actions, where we are right now in this moment? How is that going to help me get to where I need to be? And not spend so much time on speculating the future, but making it happen now. And so that's where we want to be. So let's be honest. And, and maybe the students can't connect to this completely, but maybe some of you can. About 15 years ago, if you were to think back, we used to be terrified about having our money in any sort of machine. Well, I'm not going to use that credit card. I'm not going to ATM. Paper money's good. I love my checkbook. Times have changed. Society has shifted. And now to have paper money is almost more of a burden than it is actually now having a credit card. Or emojis. Think about this. How many of us have sent an emoji in the last 24 hours or a week? I mean, we have grown men sending emojis to their friends and family and young ones where it was, wasn't that long ago that there was a huge people going, I'm never going to text. I'm not doing it. And not only are we texting, we're now sending emojis and GIFs and all sorts of goofy things because it's what we do. We have naturally adapted in our personal lives. And we can look at here. We think of the selfie generation. All these people, all these kids, they just take selfies. You know what the number one growing market of selfies are right now? 40 to 50 year old women. And the research shows that 40 to 50 year old women now act like 29 year old women. All right? So if we look at that, it's not these young guys with the selfie generation. It's a whole other market. 
because the world is changing and we're adapting whether we realize it or not. Now you're probably asking why, why is he talking about this? Because attention is our number one commodity. What are we going to do as a person or as a mentor or a coach to someone when we have the attention of somebody? When our attention is focused for those nanoseconds in some cases or minutes, what are we going to do at that time? That's our moments we gotta strike. That's the moments we have to make an impact. And this is why it's important. Because there are two types of people. There are those people that are trying to hope and pray that the past comes back to the way it used to be. And there's this other type of person who's equipping for the new normal. You who, people who are here up for this award are equipping for the new normal. But what I don't want to do is give you a rah-rah speech and tell you the same thing you've probably been told 18 million times by coaches and teachers and parents and all these adult people. All right? I want to give you four things what I believe are four secrets that nobody's telling you. And maybe you already know these, because after hearing these things, I should probably sit and talk to you and learn. But here are four things that I believe are missing to get you ready on whatever pathway you're going to be. Number one, you cannot afford to be a secret genius. Those days are done. What you have, the world has to know about it. You've got to get out and you've got to share. You can no longer view it as bragging or boasting. It is time. The world needs more genius. The world needs to know what you're doing. They need to know the pathways, your mistakes, your successes and failures. It has to go out there, and it has to move. As Angela Myers says, you're a genius, and the world needs your contribution. What good is it if no one knows what you're doing? Now, we're living through this. Think about this for a second. That we're living through the change of an age. Not the age of a change, but the change of an age. Things are moving. We are in one of the most magical, epic time periods of history. You look at in, in history, you study industrial revolution, the agricultural revolution. We are in a revolution, whether you realize it or not. It's happening, whether we like it or not. And I'm not here to tell you it's good or bad. I'm just saying we are in it. What are we doing? So hidden truth number two is that you have to increase your reach. So if we can agree in the 15 minutes right now that you can no longer hide your genius and you have to share it and you have to get it out beyond just your small network of people more importantly you have to increase your reach are you connected with the experts with the people that can help you get to where you want to be are you on twitter or instagram or snapchat with the top neurosurgeons with the top division one athletes are you learning from them studying from them you have the whole world at your fingertips and we think about this secret genius, you know, so many times I tell people, gosh, if only we had a way to capture what we do. And you do. It's called a phone that's glued to us all the time. Get out there and get connected. Um, so I had the luxury of working with Microsoft. And so here I am. I was in Seattle last week. This is Francisco. Okay. He sent you a message. All right. He's not even from the United States. I have this friend here from Sweden. All right, they're going to give you the stuff. They sent you messages. You've got to get that reach. You never know when it's going to pay off. And to think you're going to do it beyond college is too late. Because if the people at your company, your school, your neighborhood, your physical life network are all that you know how good you are, pardon my language, but you're screwed. You've got to get out there. The world's moving too fast. The world is too small to not be connected. You've got to make it happen. So, we all are aware of the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. All right, we're all connected through six degrees. This has now been proven no longer true. Facebook ran a study of 271 million people. In 2011, there was six degrees of separation. That every six people you were connected to in some capacity. The world has shrunken down and now it's 3.74. So basically one in every four people there is some sort of connection to. And if you're not making those connections, somebody else is. So as we think about Google, and this is a challenge, and I went through all the candidates and checked this out. If you cannot be noticed and found, if I Google your name in the first three pages, you don't exist. Okay, And I'm not here to say that you shouldn't exist, because you do, because your accolades are, are astounding. So somewhere, your first three pages. Now some of you have that. I found some quad speed time articles. I found some, some honor roll things from your school. I found those things. But is that really who you are? 
Is that what you're known for? Is that who you need to be? So hidden truth number three is your brand. Who are you as a person? How do you want to be represented? When someone searches your name, what do they find? And is that what you want? Now, some of you are still trying to find out who you are. That's okay. Your brand's going to change over time as you move through life and you navigate all these new pathways. But you have to know who you are. If you Google search, I go by coffee jug. Not, most people don't call me by Mr. Mauer or that guy. There's that guy, that bald guy that drinks coffee. All right? You can see stuff. And that's not to pat me on the back. But people know what they're getting when they reach out to me. Do people know what they're getting if they reach out to you? Can they even reach out to you? Did someone in Seattle find out who you are? And if not, why not? There's too much valuable skills and attributes, things to the world that you can provide that you need to, you need to get out there. So even other guys like, like the National History Day. That's phenomenal, those accolades. You know, we started National History Day for the first time at our school. Gosh, I would have loved to have you come model some of our kids, because our kids need something. Um, you know, but you're right there. I mean, those are the things that we're talking about. And so how do you separate yourself? How are you going to move yourself away from the others in a good way? And so if we can't find it online, we don't trust it. So just think about yourself. If you're going to buy something, or you're going to go look at a book or a review or whatever, we look. We go on Amazon. We go on Google. What are people saying about it? Should we get it? Should we not get it? I don't know. And if we can't find it, we don't like it. The same holds true for you. If I can't find you, how can I trust you? How can I trust what I've been told? You've got to create that story. So as we go through, you've got to go against the status quo. The thing that's hard about this is now I'm, I'm asking you to be a leader. I'm asking you to step up and be a leader and go against the grain. And that's hard because the minute we do that, we risk attack. We risk people arguing against us. We risk our failures being put out there in public. But that's what great leaders do. And all of you are leaders, whether you realize it or not. And I'm assuming you do. All right? But that's what has to get out there. It's not about boasting the successes. It's about boasting that we're human beings. If you look at anybody who's successful in life, whoever you value that to be, you, you know more about their failure than you do their successes. So to build that brand requires these things. But you have to define who you are. That's a tough question. Really, who are you? Look at yourself in the mirror. You know, who is, who is Aaron Mauer? That's a hard question to answer. Figuring out what skills that you have. Figuring out which services you can offer. Figuring out and determining what expertise you possess and what you're passionate about. And maybe you already know some of these answers, but really have that honest conversation with yourself. So this is the question that only you can answer. What makes me different from every other teacher, engineer, Coach, athlete, elected office official, neurosurgeon, animator, nonprofit organization. How are you going to move the needle so people start to recognize who you are? And you do that with the hidden fourth truth, value. What's the value that you're going to provide the world? So we have our reach. We're going to share our genius. But how do we stand out? I love Lego, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that's what I want you to think about. Because you just can't do those things on a platform that doesn't exist. You've got you to stand for something to create that value. So what's it going to be? The value formula is this. And you're probably sitting there going, yes, I already know this, because you've already had to make some of these decisions based on how you got to this point already. But the value is measured not by how badly you want something, but rather by what you're willing to give up for. it. You guys have given up a lot. You've given up weekends, maybe free time with friends or time where you could have gone to the movies to get some of these things done that you've been able to accomplish. So you have to continue to think about that. So you got to stand up and be that superhero. We all have dreams. Dreaming is easy, but to lead is hard. And moving that dream from a dream to a reality takes that courage. And at some point, you're going to have to take that leap of faith. And the sooner you can do that, the more successful you're going to be by however you define success. So we've already moved this, and this is where we are. We're moving away from consumption and getting into creation. What have you created? What have you created for the world to do and make and follow your lead? Getting away from voice, not just talking about it. I'm tired of people talking. We talk about a lot of things in this society. But actually doing it. What's your agency? What's your action? So you say you're going to go do this. 
Well, then go do it. Quit talking about it. Robotic human. You live in a great age where you no longer are we're chiseling out people that are all the same, but you get an opportunity to go be whoever you want to be. If you don't take advantage of that, you're missing out, and you guys are doing those things. And moving into now, what are those skills? What's the world telling us? What's the world saying that we need? And how can we market ourselves to fill those voids? And so I always share this. Start with where you are, with what you have, because what you have is enough. So the advice that when I'm always talking with kids and students about getting this message out there is it's very simple. And this is the story I tell every time. It always causes confusion, especially to middle school boys. If I had a dollar, why would I spend a dollar on a bookmark when I already have the dollar? You guys already have what you need. You have the ingredients to be amazing, to be the leaders, to be great. So go do that. When your time is right and you feel it, you've got to go. And I can't tell you when that's going to be, and you don't know when that's going to be, but at some point it's going to hit you in the gut, and that's when you've got to strike. But you've got to be prepared. You've got to have those networks in place to help you, because when you do that, it's not always easy. All right? So my daughter made this a couple years ago, and I, I use it in every presentation, and I think it's the essence of anything when we talk about leadership and getting started. If I were president, the first thing I would do is wake up. So I'm asking you to start small. I'm not asking you to radically change the world. It's not a rah-rah, all of a sudden, you know, go cure all these problems. But start. You've got to start somewhere. It's that first step. And so you're going to paint your masterpiece and that vision. So some of you may recognize this guy. This is Bob Ross, all right? <laughs> they had a whole marathon on, on, on Twitch and this, this online website the other day. It was rather amazing. He started with these dabs of paint. And by the end of his episode, his nice, cathartic, meditative voice, he has these masterpieces. And so before uh, you students leave today, my daughter, my four-year-old, has painted those dabs for you to get started. And I want you to take one of these, and I want you to paint your masterpiece. Where do you want to go? Where is it that you hope to be? You don't have to have all the steps in between, but I want you to paint that end piece. You resort back to that from time to time, and you get to that point where life might be hard, where life might be difficult, and you start to question, why did I go down this journey? Because it's not easy. And you go back to this and remember why you're doing what you're doing. So you need to take one of those. Um, no pressure, but my four would be heartbroken if I came back with it. So no pressure, no pressure. So what you gotta have is the, gar the guts and the heart and the passion to make. Whatever that make is gonna be, you need to go do. What would the world look like if more people started projects, more people made a ruckus, and more people took risks? I'm excited where you guys are going to go because that ruckus is going to have a positive impact on the world. I don't know where it's going to be, but somewhere we need to hear from you. And that's my challenge. I want to know the ruckus that you're going to make. Because if you don't, there's another wave of kids that are. This is our five-foot robots, a little self-bragging. My seventh graders just got this working yesterday, well, before the shoulder started smoking and caught on fire, but it was working. <laughs> These guys are building this. We're working with them. They have a YouTube channel. They have a website. The, the robot has a Twitter account. They're making themselves branded. Think where they're going to be when they're seniors by starting now as seventh graders saying, look what I did as a seventh grader. Who knows what they're going to make by seniors and who knows where they're going to be in college. You guys, it's not too late because this, all this stuff is happening, but you need to get started. And you pick those pathways and tools. I can't tell you what that's going to look like, but there's another wave of people hot on your track. If you don't, somebody else will. So the good ideas, they come from you. And here's how you do that. You don't think about it. You just start. And you keep starting. And you keep starting. And you keep starting. This is the, 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 the million dollar thing is just to start. <coughs> so many people have notes and notes and journals and logbooks and post-it notes of all these things they're going to do, these to-do lists that they never quite get through. Because they never start. It's the hardest part. But the key and this is where most people get misguided when they start, is this right here. Don't bother to be better than your contemporaries or predecessors. Be better than yourself. You cannot compare yourself to others because you're the only person that is like you. And the minute you start comparing, you're going to start thinking that you're never good enough. And that's a mindset that doesn't lead to a life of happiness. Where are you now, and how can you be a better version of yourself tomorrow? 
And how can you be a better version of yourself a week from now? That's all that matters. But we live in a society where we like to judge. We like to rank. We like to see where we fit in. That mindset will eat away at, eat away at you. You can't let that happen. I love this. Gretchen Rubin, amazing author. I love this quote. The biggest obstacle to overcome was myself. You guys are already on that pathway. But I'm asking you to take another run, another leap, and see where it takes you. So I'm asking you to change your perception a little bit. You're getting ready to hit a next phase of life. That's amazing. Who would give anything to go back to college? Trust me. Three kids and a dog and a house payment. Half my roof blew off in the, in the wind. Give me a week back in college. All right? But I'm asking you to change your perception. Look at what you have and look at it differently. I love this picture because a lot of people miss the fact that this guy has six fingers on his hand. So we get so focused on a soccer ball. Look at the world in a different way. All right? And all the ideas are wasted if you don't say go. Meaning that you have to start. You've got to get going. Well, these guys here are working on a, on a patent right now. I don't know where it's going to lead. It may not lead anywhere, but they're making it happen without mom and dad doing all the work for them. It's pretty amazing. No one can create that map for you. There is no map to create your journey. You create the map. And you let that map be so powerful that other people want to follow that destination. They want to follow those instructions and directions to figure out how in the world did he or she get there. That's what you have to do. When you do this, what happens? When you do that, what happens? These are the questions that should drive everything we do as we think. Time in and time out. Okay? This is a really long quote I'm not going to read. But all this really means here is that we are all given the ability to be creative. Every human being is able to be a creative. We have different levels of creativity. The key is this. There are no shortcuts. There's nothing easy to being successful and being a leader and attaining our goals. And many of you probably already know that. But you have to keep going. There is no magic bullet that's going to get you there. But it's just right here between your ears to make that happen. And there's a lot of slides. The end. No, I'm just kidding. So before you start, as I start to think about what in the world was I going to share with you guys today, this is where it started. This is my chicken scratch. This is my Bob Ross painting that I'm not very good at painting. Okay, but it has to start from somewhere, and it leads to an end result. Okay, you cannot grow by staying predictable and ordinary. And we have a lot of ordinary people. We've got a lot of people that are predictable. They have the same routine day in and day out. That's not your pathway. That's not what the future holds for you guys. If it did, you would not be sitting here today. There's a lot of people in this room that can give you some knowledge and wisdom that chose not to go this route as well. We already talked about this, but the boundaries are only in your head. So the, the last couple of things here, to go back to being different. Different doesn't mean right. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make a wrong decision. But what it does mean is that you took action. You took the risk to go do something that other people were afraid to do. And to start means that you're going to finish. So that's my challenge to you is to start. And by starting is that you're going to finish. You're going to hit that goal at some point, however you get there. Because if you don't finish, then you didn't start. And if you don't start, then you're not being different. And you can blend in with a lot of people who get old and just wish that they would have started. But it's too late. Today's society, not starting is far worse than being wrong. And the society likes to put a lot of pressure on being right all the time. You guys know that through high-stakes testing, GPAs. What classes do I take? I got to do this. Is this enough? Is, am I volunteering enough? Am I doing this? You guys know those pressures more than anybody else. But not starting is even worse than being wrong. So don't be afraid to be wrong. My favorite quote of all time is this right here. An ounce of action is worth a ton of theory. We can sit and talk all day long. But if you guys don't go forth and move into that next space, it's just theory. It's not going to do anybody good. It's not going to do you good or the world. You have way too much to offer. So what are you going to bring to the world? My challenge to you is to start. To make it happen 
whatever those next steps are going to be. You've already created a pathway. You've already started to move. But I want to challenge and say it's not enough. What's those next steps going to be? Because when I jumped online today, I couldn't find a lot about your journey. And those paragraphs that I just heard a little bit ago, why does the world not know about that? Where is your presence? Where is your online resume that shows the world, look at what I'm doing. Here's why I should be at your college. Here's why I should be hired right now. And if you don't choose to pick me, then I'm going to go my own way and prove you all wrong. To be honest, I couldn't find those things you have a rapport, a resume sitting that the world needs to know. And it's only going to get bigger. And you need to build that. You need to find that presence and you need the world to find out your genius. Because if they can't find it, there's a lot of people missing. So before we close, I want to make sure you do take these lovely dots. And I also have this card. And on the back of this card has a link, and they're smudged, so my email's on there in case you can't read it. It's going to take you to a page. On Sunday night, I posted on social media, and I told these people, students need the truth. What are all these things that these, these kids who are so amazing, I, I talked about you, and I said, they need the messages. What is the message that nobody's telling these kids? And there are people from all over the world that have submitted messages. Written messages, video audio, links to things that they thought people said better than themselves. And there's a whole slew to get things around the world takes some time. And so it's a living, breathing document, and people are going to keep adding to this over time. There's about 13 or 14 things on there right now, but it'll, it'll get big. Um, so they just got blasted out through the Microsoft network. So there's about 250,000 people that are getting it as we speak. Okay? They have messages for you. They know who you are. They know a little bit about your bio. And, that, and they want to tell you some things. So there's this here as well, because they have messages that I don't have that are just as powerful. But I thank you for your time. It's quite an honor to sit here and talk in front of you. I hope to find you online. I hope to see this masterpiece become a reality. And I hope one day I can go, holy cow, I actually talked to that person. And you become part of my reach, because I want to see the amazing things that you do. I don't want this to be a one-time thing. Or, oh, I think I talked to some kids. Yeah, that was fun. I want to be like, holy cow, I talked to them before they blew up the world. Can I get you out of that? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys.